So what if there was a pair of smart glasses that was built from day one to be smart enough to evolve from one use case to many? The topic of both VR and AR headsets has always been complicated. This is one of those cool ideas that in my opinion has struggled to take off because of poor implementation. HTC bet the entire company on the Vive, but it was a tank to wear, and the idea lost its footing in all the extra computing you needed to buy. Meta also bet the company on a much smaller headset, but then still can't convince anyone that the metaverse is better than the real world. Really, the only concept that has succeeded has been to give you a large screen on your face. We've covered some of the solutions from TCL and Lenovo, though so far the only company that seems to have succeeded in this market is Enreal, but mainly because it balances the looks with functionality that continues to evolve through software. I've spent the last six months using the Enreal Air and there's a lot to discuss, especially after their recent announcements at GDC, which they've partnered with us to look into. I'm I'm Rivera with Pocket now, and let's dive in. Now, a quick disclaimer, you know we're not much for doing sponsored content unless we're given the liberty to share our thoughts just the way they are, so no worries. Enreal is watching this video at the same time you are. So now that we have that out of the way, I'll repeat what I usually say. No one needs any sort of AR or VR headset, but then if we're honest, you don't really need a TV either. Each is just a portal into ways to consume content, and if you could find the 130-inch TV that costs you just as much as these Enreal Air, you'd understand why they're currently the most popular glasses in the market. I've been using these since they launched nearly, what, six months ago? Over that time, I think the experience has been interesting to say the least. In my opinion, one of the things that most other headsets have gotten wrong is their size and obviously their design. I always felt that for this form factor to succeed, it needed to look as close to a pair of sunglasses as possible. They have to be easy to carry and have the least amount of complexity possible. These Enreal Air travel in a case that's not that much bigger than that of my Serengetis, and then it fits the glasses, their optional cover, the cable, and even their powered adapter for HDMI or iOS. As a result, I've been able to travel with these everywhere and use them without feeling self-conscious that I look ridiculous. You can choose to be full fully immersed with the cover or remain fully aware of your surroundings without it. The micro OLED technology in each of these displays has proven to be just as clear whether you're using the cover or not. It's really more a question of your need to be alert or whether you'd prefer to avoid distractions. So far, I think my favorite use case has been to use it with the iPad Pro, which spares me the need for the adapter since it has USB-C. iPad OS naturally considers this as a secondary display, so what I see on the glasses is not what people see on the screen, and also allows me to sort of have multiple displays at once. And like I mentioned, the device mimics an 130-inch display on your face that's not just more immersive, but also more ergonomic, since I don't have to be looking down on it constantly. The 46 degree field of view is also far superior than even solutions we saw in the past from Microsoft and others. They also include a pretty decent set of speakers, but if you prefer privacy and your device is a direct USB-C connection, you can easily connect your Bluetooth earbuds to assist, which is how I watch movies while flying. And listen, sure, I wish the headset was a tad smaller or wireless, but with today's state of technology, these are the best smart glasses to balance all the essentials for me and by far. So why the Gaming Developer Conference? Well, sure, a massive and portable screen on your face is ideal for gaming. During GDC, we saw people use it with the Nintendo Switch, which is another scenario I use, though through a separate adapter. There was an Xbox experience and even a Steam Deck experience that I enjoyed most given the portability of both. Now, the reason these Enreal Air continue to be a good buy is because they continue to adapt into other use cases. Another reason regular VR headsets struggle is because they're really one-trick ponies, and the same can be said about AR glasses that serve as a heads-up display. They're mostly limited by their design for obvious reasons. Enreal's launch of the Air along with Nebula for Android pretty much showed that these smart glasses were made to evolve. 
It turned the product you already had into a VR headset and where your phone becomes the pointer instead of you needing a separate set of controllers to carry. If you're using Samsung phones, this allows you to even activate decks, but I actually prefer Nebula's UI because it mimics Google's efforts into a similar design language to what we saw with Google VR. GDC was also the launch platform for the beta version of Nebula for Windows, which the first from the approach we got to see on the Mac months ago in beta. Mac OS gives you the option to open up to three screens at once for quick multitasking, which makes a lot of sense since we know Macs aren't as keen on games as their competition. Windows, on the other hand, is designed more to mimic a larger curved display for additional immersion into games. Now, Josh and I had a chance to sit down for a few minutes with PJ, one of their co-founders, who gave us more insight on the approach. We had to really focus on something that people actually like, right? It doesn't matter what the underlying technologies are, nobody will ever remember that. If AR glasses were to become a major phenomenon, then people would need to be wearing these glasses, you know, for a pretty long time. Things like sunglasses, whatever, they just come to mind. We first designed Nebula to be the operating system for the AR apps on mobile phone. Once we started to get feedback from customers, from the market, everything else just started to sort of fall into place very naturally. Because we've all seen some Wall Street traders workstation, designers desktop with a gigantic ultra wide screen and all of that. So apparently people need different form factors. So we started to think why not, since now within Nebula, everything is software, not hardware. Right, you, I can't give you three different physical monitors <laughs> of different shapes and sizes, right? And have you carry them, <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. But if it's software, then I can give you as many as I can afford from a technology standpoint. Now as for where Unreal and its products are going, we also got some more insight. In terms of where the product is going, I think the glasses will get better in the sense that much larger field of view, we're working on it. Much better power consumption, so you don't have to worry about it. There's much better heating problem, lighter, and most importantly, we want to be able to build more capabilities into the glasses so that a lot of the, for example, this three DOF experience, I want them to become a standard feature of the glasses. So you plug it into anything, it will give you that um, experience. And of course, the holy grail to go wireless. And then when it comes to Unreal as a platform, the insights were also pretty interesting. There are two tracks, mm -hmm. right? I think how to talk to the developer community is one thing, and how to continue to ship interesting features to consumers is something else. Our biggest step in the consumer product direction is that, as you can see, you know, we were able to give people the spatial display experience, uh, basically with spatial anchor and all that stuff, on mobile phone and on PC, but only when you have to install our software, Nebula. And we want to break that barrier. We want to build something that brings that spatial display experience to everybody, to all hardware platforms. So there's no more worry about downloading software, compatibility, and this and that, right? In the coming months, uh, you know, we have something in the making. We're going to introduce more and more AR features into this setup. To conclude, I think that what I've liked most about these Unreal Air is that very rarely does a product evolve to do more things for the same money. It's obviously not perfect. I wish technology was already at a place where I could remove the vision module and use these as regular glasses in a modular way. That being said, to be fair, I am pretty impressed with how natural Unreal has been able to make them feel regardless and at a price that's pretty aggressive. We'll keep an eye on the full launch of Nebula for Windows in order to see just how well it performs with games in its final iteration, but from what we got to see from the beta, the experience was very smooth and reliable. If you're in the market for a headset that can do more than just one thing, I think you should really consider these Unreal Air. They're a pretty good monitor replacement on the go for some, a multiple desktop solution for Mac users, a VR headset for others, and clearly the potential just continues to evolve. Let us know if you agree with our assessment in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see the tricks I try on my flights. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.